Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here. What a magical pattern we had over the last three days. Now it's coming to an end. Here's the view. Loveland ski area, top the continental divide. Uh, still very windy up there in the mountains. I mean, we've been getting blasted the last three days, but now skies are starting to clear a little bit. Got about a foot up there at Loveland, but a lot of places had two to three times this amount of snow. Here are my bullet points and what I'm seeing here over the next, uh, say, seven to 10 days. Um, as far as the grand totals go, we saw 40 to 50 inch grand totals in parts of Utah and Colorado, like Snowbird, Alta, Rabbit Ears, Buff Pass. These places got absolutely nailed by this west-northwest flow. So what's next? That's the question at this point. Well, you have to look up to the Pacific Northwest and BC. That's what's upstream, and we've got a Strong intensity atmospheric river hitting up there over the next couple or three days with a lot of precip and a piece of that's going to break off. That's what's next for the Intermountain West, 12.7 through about 12.11. I'm going to take you back here. And I actually did write about this this morning on my blog, ChrisTomer.com. I went through some of the grand totals, some of the big numbers, Alta, Snowbird 49, Rabbit Ears Pass 42, Solitude got 35 inches out of this storm total. Steamboat 30, Vale 23, Bertha Pass at about 20. I also talked about an outlier right here, a tower, Buffalo Pass. Um, the Stillwater equivalent came in at about five inches up there. Do a 15 to one on that, and that's almost 80 inches of snow. Of course, nothing confirmed. That's just an on the napkin estimate right now, but amazing if that holds. Um, I also put together this graph, and I'm gonna take this full so you can see it right here. And here it is. So season to date, um, Alta Snowbird at the top at 116 inches behind that Jackson Hole at about 100. Um, snow mass is right there at 90. Solitude's up there at 90. Um, and you can see the other resorts, Revelstoke, Crested Butte, Ajax, Warner Park, Steamboat, Timberline Park City, and Vail, all up there over 60 inches so far for the season. And then a lot of areas still need um, a significant amount of snow like Tahoe, um, Taos could use a lot more, the Northeast could use a lot more snow, Southern Colorado could use more snow. So you get an idea of where we stand um, season to date. Um, let me take you back here, show you what uh, um, this actually looks like right now on a water vapor satellite imagery. So here's that rich atmospheric river flow and there's the, what's left of this west-northwest uh, flow which is breaking down. But anyway, this is a really big surge of moisture. That's the strong intensity atmospheric river, and we're gonna see some of that break loose and begin to hit the Intermountain West 12.7 through 12.11. Uh, Let me walk you through it on the forecast radar and satellite. So by this afternoon, that's the setup. As we head into Tuesday morning, it's all Pacific Northwest and BC. It's all happening up there. Uh, but again, once we start getting into 12.7, and here it comes, we start to see snow, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, and the Wasatch. And then by the time we get into 12, late 12, 7 and 12, 8, it's, it's diving in to Colorado. Here it comes. You can see it's definitely more widespread. We could have snow in Denver as well on 12, 8, um, but snow continues all the way upstream through Idaho and uh, northwest Montana. By the time we get into 12, 9, still snowing in Colorado, and then all of that begins to move away. New storm hits the Pacific Northwest. All right, let's talk about the jet stream here, and it is uh, powerful west-east, so it's going to bring in that storm, 12, 6, 12, 7, 12, 8, 12, 9, 12, 10, just escorting it west to east. By the time we get into 12, 8, we've got a dip in the jet, low spinning up, Wyoming and Colorado. That's how we're going to get that accumulation throughout uh, the state of Colorado with that low. And way down the road, here's your ridge of high pressure, 12, 12, 12, 13. You can see the jet ridging to the north, waiting on the next storm cycle, which is building out over the Pacific. So a little quieter stretch right there for the Intermountain West after 12, 11. Here's what I'm forecasting as far as snow. The rest of today through the 6th, very light, very, very light. Most of that happens today um, in Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and northern Colorado. But it's building up in the Pacific Northwest. Here's the... Uh, the transition into 12.7 and 12, through 12.11. And that storm system looks like it could deliver almost two feet to the Tetons, a foot to big sky, a couple of feet to the interior of Idaho and Brundage. Big snow there. Um, about five to 10 for the Wasatch in Colorado, most of that central to northern mountains, probably eight to 12 inches, could be more. Uh, up in the Steamboat, Buffalo Pass, Cameron Pass area, less in southern Colorado. And then the Pacific Northwest gets hit pretty good, uh, 6 to 16 inches of accumulation up there. So we're looking good in that period. Uh, one more stop in the northeast. What, most of what you see here is actually going to fall today. 
with this storm system moving through, and then it's a much quieter period. There's a storm system late in the period, but it looks like it could be too warm and it might be primarily rain. So again, most of what you see there happens today. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. I really appreciate you tuning into these videos over the last three, four, five days with this really this golden combo, this west-northwest flow. Um, hope you got something out of it. Hope you found some great conditions, and thanks again. Take care.